to the Coleraine Presbyterian Church. In great times of darkness, God calls us to shine forth the light of God's kingdom. Please join me in the call to worship. Open the gates of righteousness. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This, this is, is the, the gate, gate of the Lord through, through which the righteous, righteous may enter. enter. I will give you thanks, for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Please join me in the prayer of the day. Humble and riding on a donkey, we greet you. Acclaimed by crowds, caroled by children, we cheer you, moving from the peace of the countryside to the corridors of power, we salute you, Christ our Lord. You are giving the beast a burden, a new dignity. You are giving majesty a new face. You are giving those who long for redemption a new song to sing. With them, with heart and voice, Shout, Hosanna! Blessed, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. Good morning, everybody, and thank you for joining us for our online Palm Sunday service. We, uh, we've been... Uh, meeting online now for three weeks in a row. It looks like we are going to be meeting online for a few more weeks, uh, unfortunately, and until this uh, crisis around the world passes and in this country. Uh, so uh, this coming week is Holy Week, and we are going to have a Monday, Thursday service online. We will uh, make sure that service is, is posted by uh, I'd say around 6 o'clock on Thursday, and that way you can click on the service and join in celebrating the, the Lord's Supper together. Uh, we will uh, have the bread and, and the cup here, and we will bless it here, and then online you can yourselves uh, get bread and, and, and get grape juice and uh, celebrate the Lord's Supper Thursday evening as we... Uh, Post that service online. Then Easter Sunday again, we will uh, we will post online, and you can celebrate it at home with us uh, in our Easter service. Uh, there, there will be no uh, sunrise service, or no Easter breakfast, unfortunately, but we will uh, have a service here on online to, to celebrate uh, the, the Lord's resurrection. I believe that is uh, all of the announcements. Can anybody think of uh, any other announcement? Uh, we have uh, three of us here that, this morning who are uh, preparing uh, this service. Uh, Patrick, Tom, and, and Ryan. They, uh, they do not have any announcements, so we'll move on to our Lenten reading. Our scripture lesson from this Lenten reading comes from the book of Matthew 21, 1 through 3. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her coat by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. My name is Matthew. I once worked for the Roman government. When I first met Jesus, I was sitting at the tax collection table counting coins. He asked me to follow him, and I about fell out of my chair. Tax collectors are not the most popular people in Judah, yet he welcomed me. I invited him to dinner at my house to talk more. 
the local Pharisees complained that Jesus be belittled himself by eating with sinners and tax collectors. He put them in their place by saying, I have not come to call the righteousness, but sinners. Those words got to me. I am a sinner. Even though I grew up in a good Jewish home, learning the scriptures, I allowed my greed to get the best of me. I compromised my principles to earn money by serving the Roman government. Right then and there, I decided to turn from my selfish ways and become his disciple. My life has been turned around by Jesus, the Son of David. Why do I call him the Son of David? Like I said, I've known the scriptures from my youth. All that Jesus does fulfills the words of the prophets, the blind see, the hungry are fed, and the dead are raised. But something else happened today that truly confirmed my conviction. We are headed to Jerusalem for the Passover. As we neared the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of us into the village ahead of the, to find a donkey. I thought that was strange. Why did he want to ride into Jerusalem on a donkey? Then I remembered what I had learned years ago. The prophet Zechariah announced how the Messiah would enter Jerusalem. He said, Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See your king come to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey. Today Jesus made a statement to the world. By riding into Jerusalem on a donkey, he fulfilled scripture and claimed that he is the Messiah, the son of David. We lined the road, shouted and rejoiced. We laid our cloaks and palm branches on the road. We cried out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes to the name of the Lord. The crowds in the city were stirred and asked, who is this? Then I remembered what the prophet Malachi said, the Lord you are seeking will come to his temple, the messenger of the covenant whom you desire will come. Morning, as we head into our uh, time of praise, pick this song, Amazing Love. I uh, feel like it's a, uh, a good lead up. For today we celebrate uh, Palm, Sunday, Palm Sunday, the uh, entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. But that was just the first step leading through uh, up to Holy Week for what was about to come for Jesus. For him being put on the cross and giving that amazing, amazing love and sacrifice for us. So let's go ahead and sing our praise song, Amazing Love.
Sunday stories. It's a story about Dawson the donkey. Old Dawson the, the donkey was uh, kind of an ordinary donkey. He was always getting into trouble. When he'd be out in the, in the backyard, sometimes he would get into the carrots and start eating the carrots back there, and his owner would, would come out and say, You dumb donkey! Get out of the carrots! Go! Go! Get out of here! Sometimes he would even wander into the house and he would bump into the table and knock over the dishes or, or maybe knock over a vase and, and break it. And, and the woman of the house would say, Dawson, you ornery donkey, get out of my house. Sometimes he liked to go out in the yard and he, he would try to play with the, the goats. But the goats didn't like him and, 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 and the goats would butt him with their heads and kick him with their feet. And, uh, Donkey felt so bad. And then one day he, he wandered into the flower bed and he started eating all the flowers. And boy, did he get in trouble for that. His, his owner came out and said, Now, Dawson, you dumb donkey, you're going to have to, to go out into the alley. And so the owner led him out into the alley and tied him up back there. But while he was back there feeling very alone and, and very sad, a couple men came up to him. And the man said, oh, this looks like a good donkey. I think the Lord could use this donkey. Would you like to, to help us out, Mr. Donkey? And Dawson shook his head. And the men knocked on, on the door, and the owner came out and said, uh, what do you want? And the men said, could we borrow your donkey? The Lord has need of it. And, and the man said, oh, you don't want to use this donkey, this is a dumb donkey, he's always getting in trouble. Oh yeah, the Lord told us this is the donkey that, that we need to, 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 to use. And the man said, the owner said, said well I wish, you, I wish you luck because you're going to need all the Lord's help you can to, to use this donkey. And so they led the donkey away and they said, we'll bring it back to you as soon as we're done. Well the owner and his wife were sitting at the table there and they eat lunch. And all at once they heard all this noise outside. And the man said, what's, what's going on out there? They heard people shouting and yelling, Hosanna! Glory to God in the highest! Hosanna to the King of Kings! And the man and his wife went outside, and lo and behold, there was their donkey, Dawson the donkey, riding down the street with Jesus on his back. And the man had heard about Jesus and had seen Jesus before. He knew that everybody was believing that, that Jesus might be the Messiah. And he and his wife ran out to the streets and they looked down and they couldn't believe it. Here comes Dawson the donkey with Jesus riding on the back. And everybody was waving palms and, and laying them on the ground in front of the donkey. And the man even took off his coat and laid it down because he believed Jesus was the Messiah. He, he, nudged the guy next to him and said, that's my donkey, he's a great donkey. What a good donkey I had. Look at him, Jesus is riding on my donkey. He was so excited. Later that afternoon, when the disciples were done with the donkey, they brought Dawson back to the owner. And Dawson gave him a big hug and said, what a good donkey I have. Now the lesson that I wanted to teach you kids is, uh, Sometimes you get into trouble, sometimes you feel bad, sometimes people even call you names. They might say, oh, you dummy, why did you do that? Don't believe those names. In God's eyes, you kids are precious, precious, precious. And another thing, just like God had a, pur a purpose for Dawson, God's got a purpose for you. And you need to discover that purpose because when you do, Boy, I tell you what, people become surprised at what God does in your life. Because God gives you wonderful things to do for God's kingdom. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for all of our kids and uh, help them to remember, Lord, that you, they are precious in your eyes, no matter what someone might call them. We know that you have a great purpose for each and every one of them. Guide them along the road of their lives, step by step, to discover that purpose. Because when they do, oh, so many good things can happen through them. Amen.
knowing that we are flawed human beings living in a fallen world, we come humbly before our holy God. And it is by God's grace through the Son that we can be restored and renewed. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Dear Lord, daily we must come before you and confess our sins because of this human nature and our own strength. We cannot win the battle against temptation. Therefore, we need your forgiveness and grace. Restore us this day to the joy of your salvation and empower us to face temptation and the strength of your spirit. Then victory will be ours, not because of anything we have done, but because of everything you have done. In these moments of silence, please hear our confession of sin. Please take a few moments for your own personal prayer of confession. Amen. Since God has forgiven us in Christ, let us forgive one another. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you.
be with Jean, we pray, and enlighten. We think of uh, Sharon and Ron, continue to pray for them. Watch over uh, John Mann and Tia. We lift up uh, Tom Bruni and his recovery. Jennifer Thayer's mom, Pat, watch over her. We continue to be with Lad Riser and Jackie's dad, Jack. We lift up uh, Marlene to you and Donna. Continue to lift up uh, Leo Zambori, young Leo. We pray that he would uh, continue to be cancer free. We lift up young Dominic to you, Lord, Lord, battling lymphoma cancer. Karen, we pray that, that for all these people, Lord, you would watch over them and give them victory in this battle that they're facing. Lord, we continue to pray for those looking for Brian and Joni who are still missing. We ask that you would give guidance, you would give clues. Be with uh, young Sophia, watch over her, bless her and her family. Watch over all of our young kids, Lord, be with them. Watch over them uh, during this time. We lift up Kay to you, Lord, and battling Parkinson's. And Ron, with his health problems, be with him. We lift up uh, Jack's grandson, Colton, battling diabetes. Watch over him. Be with Lisa and continue to touch her and heal her knee. Watch over Juanita and her hip replacement, Lord, continue to help her heal. We lift up Donna to you in the battle that she's facing, the difficulties she's facing. And Libby's mom, Greta, watch over her. We continue to pray for Peggy that uh, you would clear her vision and she would receive her, her vision fully back again. Watch over Nancy, we pray. Be with Tia after her surgery. We, look, we lift up young Luca to you and pray that he would become strong enough and healthy enough to get this heart surgery. Oh, we lift up all these unspoken requests. We ask Lord that you would watch over them, guide, to guide them. Be with uh, our hospital situation and the hospital situation around the country as more and more people get this uh, virus. We, we pray for those uh, areas that are uh, at ground zero, those areas that are having all kinds of, of people come into the hospital and they need beds and they need uh, everything else to, to help these people be with them. We pray that uh, we would uh, be able to see one of our local hospitals open up again, OBMC or East Ohio Regional Hospital. Guide those who are making those decisions. Lord, we uh, lift up uh, the Roberta Mitchell family. She is uh, Past has gone on to, to her eternal home with you in heaven. Be with her family and comfort them. We continue to pray for uh, Dave Bruni recovering from heart surgery. Vic Sterling recovering from this paralysis that he had. We lift up Carly Fairbanks to you and pray for her health that she would continue to improve. And we think of Shirley Benline and her health. Watch over her. Be with Randy Walker. We pray, Lord, that your healing hand would touch him. Be with uh, Sue and and Bill, who are together uh, battling uh, Bill's Parkinson's disease, watch over him. Lord, we lift up uh, Bill Nagel to you. We thank you that uh, he's out of the hospital and feeling better. We pray for his full recovery. So, Lord, we thank you for all these people, and uh, we pray that your hand of power and blessing would be upon their lives. Continue to watch over uh, this community and this nation as we try to get through these dark days of this pandemic. Give us strength and give us hope, and we pray that it would end, end soon and things would get back to normal. We pray for those who have uh, lost their jobs and those small businesses that are on, on teetering on, on, on the end of closing. We pray that you'd be with them and we pray that you'd be with our leaders and help them to make wise decisions, Lord. Not, uh, not decisions that are, are selfishly trying to, to formulate one party or another party's agenda, Lord, but decisions that would help this country and move this country forward. So Lord, we thank you for all these things, and now we pray together, or we sing together the prayer that uh, your Son taught us.
just so that you can um, write it down and, and uh, send your offerings to our church mailbox. Uh, please don't forget to do that during this difficult time. We need everybody to, to remain strong and uh, continue to support us here at the Colerain Presbyterian Church. So while the offertory plays, we'll leave this up here so that you can uh, write it down if you need to. And uh, continue to prayerfully think about giving to this uh, ministry.
New Testament lesson comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 21. Hear the word of God. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them, bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, see your king comes to you gentle and riding on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Let us pray. Lord, we pray that you would bring your word to us with power and understanding, that your spirit would be our teacher, and that our eyes would be open to the deep truths of your word, because when our eyes are open, we draw that word deeply within, and it has a, a transforming effect upon our lives. As we embrace your words and your truths, our lives are guided and shaped, and our very characters become more like Christ. So, Lord, we pray that the power of your Spirit would be upon us this morning as, as we hear your word. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. To me, these uh, last few weeks, have, it felt like that we are uh, in the twilight zone. In my 63 years on this earth, I've never experienced such strange and, and unusual conditions. Have you ever seen the Twilight Zone episode where this guy wakes up and the, the streets are empty and all the stores are closed and there's no one around and there's this eerie feeling in the air and so he goes out and he walks around trying to figure out what's going on. A actually, that's the plot to about half of the Twilight Zones. So you've probably seen, you've probably seen at least one of those. Well, that's what these dark days remind me of, the twilight zone. When I read the scriptures, though, I'm reminded by God's word to endure these kinds of times with hope. Our Old Testament scripture passage this morning is a perfect example. The Israelites had lost all hope. They had no hope of returning to their homeland and to Jerusalem because Babylon destroyed everything. They burned the countryside. They broke down Jerusalem's walls. They destroyed the, the city. They destroyed the temple. As the Babylonians carried off the Israelites as captives to exile, the Israelites witnessed the very death of their nation. Now there was a prophet who was taken captive with them to Babylon, who refused to give up hope, and his name was Isaiah. This is what the prophet Isaiah said. The sovereign Lord has given me well-instructed tongue to know the words that sustain the weary. He wakens me morning by morning, wakens my ear to listen like one being instructed. During these dark days, Isaiah was connected into God. In his deep communion with the Lord, he began to receive these teachings from God that opened up his mind to possibilities of the future. Through Isaiah, God began to give a word of hope to the people who had become incredibly weary through these circumstances that they were going through. Someone might say, well, maybe, maybe it was because uh, Isaiah wasn't going through uh, as tough as times as the people. Maybe he had a cushy job there in Babylon and, and it wasn't so tough on him. They would be wrong if they said that. Isaiah 55 and 6. 
The Sovereign Lord has opened my ears. I have not been rebellious. I have not turned away. I offered my back to those who beat me, my cheek to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from mocking and spitting. Actually, Isaiah was suffering more than the average Israelite there in exile in Babylon. Why? Because of this message of hope that he began to preach in the streets of Babylon. His message was God is going to raise the nation of Israel from the dead. The Babylonians are going to be defeated. The Israelites are going to march back to Jerusalem and reform as a nation and rebuild the city and rebuild the temple. So no wonder Isaiah suffered beatings. No wonder he was mocked and spit upon. No wonder his beard was pulled out for preaching this message there in the streets of Babylon. Something burned brightly within Isaiah. Isaiah 50, verse 7. Because the Sovereign Lord helps me, I will not be disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know I will not be put to shame. You could say that Isaiah took this message of hope to the very front lines, putting himself in harm's way, but he set his face like flint toward Jerusalem. Despite the beatings, despite the mockings and the spitting, he kept telling the Israelites to endure with hope because God was going to get them through this. God was going to raise the nation of Israel from the dead. The people would eventually leave Babylon and rebuild the country of Israel. Now there is a man in the New Testament who also set his face like flint in the direction of Jerusalem. This person was a humble servant, yet a divine warrior like Isaiah. When it came to marching to the front lines and putting himself in harm's way, he was a warrior. Of course, that person was Jesus. Jesus knew that when he entered the gates of Jerusalem, triumphantly riding on that donkey, he was entering a battle zone where he was going to die. Jesus knew that he would be beaten, that he would be mocked, that he would be spit upon, just, just like Isaiah, but even worse, he would be executed. It was a very dark road he was traveling, yet he set his face like flint as he rode that donkey through those gates. Why? Because of the hope that burned brightly within him. It was a hope of resurrection and a hope of new creation. Matthew 21, 9, the crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the Son of David, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heavens. See, these followers that lined the streets were claiming a prophecy. There was a prophecy from one of the ancient prophets that, that they were claiming, and this is the prophecy. It was from the prophet Zechariah of the Old Testament. 9, verse 9, Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you righteous and victorious, lowly, riding on the donkey, on the colt, the foal of a donkey. Jesus was declaring to the crowd, your Messiah has arrived. He intentionally rode that donkey into Jerusalem to fulfill this particular prophecy. What was the reaction of the people there in Jerusalem when they saw all this? Matthew 21, 10, when Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, who is this? See, his followers recognized that he was the Messiah and they were celebrating. The Jewish leaders 
recognized him as a threat to their way of life, they began to panic. They said, by claiming Messiahship, this Jesus could bring the wrath of Rome down upon us. Clearly, Jesus knew he was riding into a battle zone where he would suffer and die, yet he did so with amazing hope. You could say Jesus was a humble servant, yet a divine warrior. As Zechariah prophesied, he entered the gates of Jerusalem humbly, riding on a donkey instead of a war horse. But what was the first thing he did when he got into Jerusalem? Well, the first thing he did is he went to the temple courts and violently, like a warrior, he cleared out the temple, he cleared out the animal traders, he, he cleared out the money changers. Matthew 21, 13. It is written, he said to them, my house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. You see, these acts of riding into Jerusalem on a donkey and then clearing the temple were Jesus' declaration to the world that he is Lord. Not only is he Lord of the temple, but he is the Lord of all creation. See, Jesus did all of this to bring about something new, a new temple and a new creation. And guess what? You and I are a part of this new creation and a part of this new temple. What Christ has done for us cannot be crushed by the world. In fact, what is happening in the world right now cannot touch what Christ has done for us. No government. No army, no philosophy, no disaster, no weapon that could be formed against us, no crisis, no catastrophe, no plague can diminish this new creation and this new temple that God has built in Christ. If that truth doesn't give you hope, then what will it? This is why we must endure these times with hope. You see, if the Israelites did not endure with hope when they were in Babylon, they would have died as a nation. There would have been no Jewish faith. If Jesus did not endure with hope, the hope of the resurrection through all the suffering and through the cross, there would be no Christian faith. Both Israel and Jesus endured with hope. Now we must endure with hope. Then we will emerge from these dark days, shining the light of Christ into a world in need of hope. Amen. Let us join in our final hymn, All Glory, Laud, and Honor.
The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.
Clearly, Jesus knew he was riding into a battle zone where he would suffer and die, yet he did so with amazing hope. You could say Jesus was a humble servant, yet a divine warrior. As Zechariah prophesied, he entered the gates of Jerusalem humbly, riding on a donkey instead of a war horse. But what was the first thing he did when he got into Jerusalem? Well, the first thing he did is he went to the temple courts and violently, like a warrior, he cleared out the temple, he cleared out the animal traders, he, he cleared out the money changers. Matthew 21, 13. It is written, he said to them, my house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. You see, these acts of riding into Jerusalem on a donkey and then clearing the temple were Jesus' declaration to the world that He is Lord. Not only is He Lord of the temple, but He is the Lord of all creation. See, Jesus did all of this to bring about something new. A new temple and a new creation. And guess what? You and I are a part of this new creation and a part of this new temple. What Christ has done for us cannot be crushed by the world. In fact, what is happening in the world right now cannot touch what Christ has done for us. No government no army, no philosophy, no disaster, no weapon that could be formed against us, no crisis, no catastrophe, no plague can diminish this new creation and this new temple that God has built in Christ. If that truth doesn't give you hope, then what will? This is why we must endure these times with hope. You see, if the Israelites did not endure with hope when they were in Babylon, they would have died as a nation. There would have been no Jewish faith. If Jesus did not endure with hope, the hope of the resurrection through all the suffering and through the cross, there would be no Christian faith. Both Israel and Jesus endured with hope. Now we must endure with hope. Then we will emerge from these dark days, shining the light of Christ into a world in need of hope. Amen. Let us join in our final hymn, All Glory, Laud, and Honor.
lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.